Welcome to the Django tutorial series. This is the first video and here we are going to start creating our shopping list app. So go to your preferred directory, here I am going to create it on my desktop and there create a folder. And that folder should have um, the name of your app. So basically I am naming it here Django Shopping List. open the folder and open the terminal inside it now we're going to create a virtual environment here so if you don't know what a virtual environment is I really suggest you discover more about it it's a really important concept if you are a developer we are going to use the Python module venv when for this and when you use a module you have to add the dash m flag python m venv and we are going to create a virtual environment with the name of venv itself so this is the module's name and this is the virtual environment's name okay it doesn't have to be venv it can be anything else now we're creating a virtual environment here now it's done creating it now we activate the virtual environment what I see here this base is the default uh, conda environment that we get with anaconda the python distribution so I'm going to disable this virtual environment and activate this one so what we do is if you don't have conda you don't have to do this I'm just doing it to remove this one okay conda deactivate and then source when then activate now you see when here it means that it's activated you can do it other way too um, to show you I'll just deactivate it and then you can do dot when then activate so basically when you activate a virtual environment you're creating a room for yourself so none of the other dependencies that you have installed for your other projects will interfere with this project you have an independent room so it becomes very easy to debug this app and even manage the apps now I'm going to show you that this virtual environment is very very empty it should return nothing so pfreeze gives you everything that's installed in your environment and right now you have nothing now we'll install Django in it pip install Django okay After we install Django, I'll do the same command pip freeze and we should have Django here. It's Django and a few of other its dependencies. Now we can go on to creating our Django project. Django admin start project. Now I don't want this command to create one more folder inside this already existing folder. So basically I'm going to do is Django shopping list type the name of your folder and then a dot so it will initialize the app within this folder itself and if you don't do this and uh, you just miss this dot what it will do is create another Django shopping list within here which we don't want at all now what we see here is apart from this virtual environment we have manage.py file it's one of the main files which manages the Django project and here we have the Django shopping list and it contains all the settings.py, urls.py, wizgi, asgi and yeah this is in it 
so if you are familiar with python then you know under double underscore in it double underscore dot py this is a file which defines this folder as a module now this is the root of our directory in django whenever we say root we mean the directory or folder where you have the manage.py now we are going to create our shopping list app so we can just name the app anything here i'm going to name it list django admin okay start app list now this is our app inside this app we have admin.py apps.py and app.py this migrations folder which you don't have to care about tests.py and views.py right now the things that we have to care about are models.py views.py and admin.py maybe a bit now i'm going to open my folder in my code editor which is visible studio code for that you just type code dot in your terminal if you haven't tried out visual studio code i really suggest you do it is a lot of extensions debugger a really good i mean uh, file system is there in uh, other code editors as well but this one also gives you an integrated terminal where you can open as many terminals as you want within the code editor itself so this is a big plus now we're going to the project directory and here we have uh, our list app inside the project directory we have settings.py we open the settings.py file and here we have all the basic settings that you'll have for a django app up here you have installed apps and in the installed apps we want to put list which is our app we have created here Before we do anything else, I want to migrate everything. So basically in Django, we have to make migrations and then migrate to database. So migrations are these files over here, which um, store what changes are to be made to the database. So whenever we make a change to the uh, data structure or model, we do python manage.py make migrations, which will create these migration files over here, like pycache and all and then we do python manager.py migrate which will migrate these files to the database so the database knows what's the structure of our data now you can see it's running a lot of migrations here but we haven't created any models so which migrations is it running actually these are a few basic things that django has it in itself like um, related to the admin app authorization and everything user models now for example if we have a person model then the person uh, will have what kind of things like a person will have a name for sure then a person will also have um, a, a gender then a person can also have a phone number and uh, address so that's everything that you need to put in when you make a person so that's the data structure of a person so that's going to be our model for a person now what we are going to do in this app is store items with their quantities so what's the item going to have an item will have a name and a quantity how much of that uh, do we want to buy so to create it we create a class item which inherits from models.model we import this uh, you can see up there we import the models from django.db import models so this is the syntax class item which means the name of the model which inherits from models.model then we give a colon in front of it and enter and indentation is extremely important here so give indentation and it should be uniform because python is totally based off of indentation
Now we do this name equals models dot char field. Char field means character field that we can put our characters into like names and numbers. Max length, this is something we need to specify. And quantity is going to be an integer field. Now that our model is ready, what we do here is python manage.py make migrations. And then this migration file is created, which shows how your uh, data model is going to be written to the database. Django does this all by itself, so you don't have to deal with the database. Now we do python manage.py migrate. Now that we have learned how to make migrations and uh, how to make our own data models, we should learn how to run our server, development server. So for that we have python manage.py run server command, which I have run right now. And you'll have to go to the localhost 8000 port by default where you have your server running so open a p browser and go to 127.0.0.1 colon 8000 See, you have launched a rocket. <laughs> the install worked successfully. So your server is running and uh, everything goes fine. Now what you do is go to the admin.py and uh, yeah, first of all I'll show you how the admin.py looks. So go to slash admin here and here you'll have to log in. So before you log in, you'll have to create a user. So to create that user, we use the python manage.py create super user command. It will create a super user which is something like an administrator of a site. So type in python manage.py create super user and put in your details like what you want your username to be, email, uh, email is not necessary, then password. After you're done with that, you can log into the admin site and uh, you can see your models, models, I mean Django models, <laughs> and uh, you can add them, edit them, delete them. You can perform all the CRUD operations from there. Now I've logged in, but where is our item? The item that we created, it doesn't appear here. So for that, we have to go to admin.py and then we have to add a few lines for each model. So we import this item model into the admin.py using uh, this line. From dot models, import item. Now that we have imported item here, what we have to do is admin.site.register and put the item in there. So now you can see the item will be on your um, server right there. Then we add an item like milk and uh, put a quantity there. like we want three of them then we save and add another what do we want how about um, some cookies let's have uh, a lot of them <laughs> and then we'll have 
something else. Just go on adding items and then we are going to see how we can display this data to the user who visits our site. So now we have our five items here. But a normal user is not going to come into the admin panel, see your items and do stuff. So how do we show it to the user? What we do is we go into views.py and create views. Views are functions or classes that uh, withdraw I mean take data query data from your database and uh, display it to your user this video has already been pretty long here we have seen how we can create a Django project how we can create a Django app inside it and uh, how to create models in Django and how to put um, those models inside the admin site so we can see them later but then we also need to have views templates to show this data to the user when the user queries it but that's going to be in the next video so stay tuned bye bye